eternal Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Please let's take our seats. God bless you. How me greet your neighbor to your left and to your right? Tell the person good evening. Can you be a little more polite? Be, tell the person good evening properly. <laughs> Amen. Ask the person a little. Ask the person, how was your day? Ask the person for me, how is your morale? Ask the person for me, are you on top of pressure or pressure is on top of you? <laughs> Amen. All right. So I want to welcome you especially tonight in God's presence. Please, if you don't mind, can we appreciate those gentlemen that brought us the charges and the... Let's, may they not appreciate you like that. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Thank you very much for that effort. And then, young ministers, you know we have a meeting on Sunday after service. Um, and then on Sunday, by God's grace, please let us, you know, come on time. It's going to be a combined service, single service. We're going to be having Thanksgiving. We hope that those that have Thanksgiving to render, will render their Thanksgiving on that day. So that we can progress with the next weddings that are coming. And the next child. Young ministers, you are going to, you are going to do naming ceremonies. So, hmm? There's a young man I want to send you to. That is, I want to send to, I don't know who to send. All of you are not um, looking available. But there's work. Going. Praise God. Right. Tonight I want us to go straight into God's word. Are you ready for God's word tonight? Yes, sir. I want us to do something. By the way, on Friday we'll be having a vigil. And I want to encourage you to try to come. It was a beautiful time last time. And um, I want to encourage you to come for the vigil. It's going to be prayer and praise again. Praise God. And then it's going to be a good time that I want to encourage us to please invite our friends. And um, it's going to be a good one. The overflow won't be bad. But more importantly, I want to also mention that we're likely to have a guest minister who is coming. This is our first guest minister here. It's going to be a profound one. Um, Reverend David Amuneni. He's a sound gentleman. I've shared fellowship with him, but I've never heard him preach. So I, he, he's coming to time. I just thought he should come around. We'll be blessed, okay? It's going to be a great one. Try to make it, and the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. All right, let's go into God's word tonight. Um, I want to bring sort of a, an exhaustion on the subject that we've begun. And it is my intention tonight to speak specifically on the subject of faith for health and healing. Faith for health and healing. My emphasis is not health and healing tonight. My emphasis is the faith element in that title. So I want to bring to our attention faith for health and healing. Faith for divine health and healing. If you've been following this conversation from the beginning of the month, we've been talking about how important it is to be healthy. Praise the Lord. I, I did share with us that there are two major things you should not treat. I said, don't trade with your health and don't trade with your wealth. There are two very important things that you should not joke with. May you not spend your money on a sickness in Jesus' name. And I believe that God will have us take it seriously because many times, Christians, um, the Bible, Jesus, Jesus will give us a picture how that we err because we do not know the scriptures. The word of God says that my children, that's God's people, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In other words, the participation or the role of Satan in the destruction of the children of God is not as much as ignorance is. In other words, ignorance has a higher percentage in destroying God's children than Satan. If it was Satan like that, the Bible would have told us, my people are destroyed because of Satan. He said, no, my children are destroyed because of ignorance. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Say amen. amen. So I did share with us how important it is that we should keep in good health. I spoke to us how that the subject of the realm of the spirit runs simultaneously with the realm of the natural. Many people think that they will need to step out of their natural body to enter into the realm of the spirit or enter into some ecclesia and start to shake before they are spiritual. No. 
we run spiritual things simultaneously with natural things. I gave you an illustration. Eve ate an apple and humanity fell spiritually. Do you remember that story? Yes. I gave you an example. Jesus Christ died physically, but humanity you know, was redeemed, saved spiritually. Alright? So, there are things we do physically that carry spiritual import. There are things that we do, and you need to know that it has not expired because we are living in modern times. No. There are conversations you will have when a woman stands in front of a man and a priest and a congregation. Would you take this man as your lawfully wedded wife or husband? And you say, I do. And in the realm of the spirit, the Bible says, whatsoever the Lord has joined together, let no man put us under. That means there are things we are doing, we are simultaneously, in real time, actively bringing to bear spiritual realities in real time. So, somehow, you, there's a way you just think that maybe it's when I'm praying, I will get spiritual. No. Your conversation, your yes, your no, your engagement. That's why I shared with you, like I told you, sex is spiritual. Sex is spiritual. It's 100% spiritual, whether or not you like it or not. The Bible tells us he that has sex with a harlot is one spirit with the person. It's spiritual. And what does that mean? That means that our conversations every day, whatever we are doing every day, we are transacting in the spirit. Whether or not you like it, you are literally transacting. Whether you say the decisions you make, they may have direct import on your spiritual status. How can you look at someone and say, in the name of Jesus be healed? I only said words. But power goes out and gets in touch with that person, rejuvenates whatever cell needs to be rejuvenated. We are literally in a spiritual transaction. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So you look at someone, and that's why, you know, it's important that we get enlightened about the activities of the realm of the spirit. Because your ignorance is not an excuse in the realm of the spirit. You, you can't be claiming ignorance in the realm of the spirit. So we are bringing it to bear how important it is to take the subject of our healing and our health seriously. I did remember that I mentioned along the line of those teachings how that what brought man to fall was what he ate. Remember I said so? And what Jesus gave us back was something we should eat, which is the Holy Communion that we eat now, that brought us life. So man fell by what he ate. Man must go back to life by what he's eating. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man fell by one singular experience of bite and eating and chewing Man must continuously renew himself by eating of this flesh and not blood. John chapter 6 verse 54. I'm not the one that said it. He said that if you don't eat of this flesh and drink of the blood, you do not have life in you. I'm, it's not my opinion. It's not, I'm not ashamed. If you leave me to an opinion, I will tell you that just live your life. But that's not what the word of God says. It says that you must remember to take of the communion. Praise the Lord. Come on, give me a better response. I said praise the Lord. So we, we, we began that conversation and I said... Therefore, if we are living spiritual life in a natural world, that means we are spirits having an earthly experience. So the Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. What does that mean? The one translation says we walk by faith, not by sensory perception. You cannot afford to walk in this world with sensory perception. You can look at a beautiful lady and say, this lady is beautiful. She will make my life beautiful. Oh my dear. I can tell you, a witch can be beautiful. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? This guy looks six-pack and he has only one um, chest, whatever you call it, I don't know. But I'm saying, that guy can chest your destiny down. I'm telling you, looks like a bloke, he can block your destiny. So it's not by sensory perception. You cannot live this life effectively. At a certain level, you can start gradually, but at a certain level... If you must break out, you must be spiritual. At a certain level. You might be trying every at a level. You will know that you are hitting something. You, are, you, are not, you have to get that spiritual fact right. Otherwise, you have what they call the leanness of soul. You can even buy things. You can have money, but you are empty inside. At a level, spiritual things come up, sir. Am I making some sense here? So we need to answer those questions before we get stranded. We need to understand it. And I'm saying one of the ways life can get you stranded is your spiritual ignorance on divine health. Now, I share with us that a man will be what he is by the grace of God. Say after me, say, I am. I am. Say properly, with attitude. Say, I am. I am. What I am, I am. By, the by the grace of God. 
Now, what you just said is scripture. It's not my opinion. You know what that scripture is? 1 Corinthians 15, 10. It says, I am what I am by the grace of God. That means if any man will be anything in this life, he will be what he will be by the grace of God. So let's say it again. Say, I am what I am by the grace of God. Say it again. Say, I will be what I will be by the grace of God. Why do I say so? It is the grace of God that makes a life. I've shared it with you again and again. A grace-made life will always be superior to a man-made life. The life that grace makes is superior. Hallelujah. The life that grace makes is superior, sir. I know you can labor like an elephant, but you might eat like an ant. It takes grace to add little, to add blessing to your little, to make it substance. When the Lord blesses your little, it's called the grace of God. Life cannot be lived effectively without grace. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Our life will be more effective by grace. What does grace mean? Grace is that gospel that gentleman spoke about. All that God has provided for you. All that God wants to do for you. The Bible says that we are saved by grace. Am I correct? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and verse 8. It says you are saved by grace. But you see that grace is what God has in store for us but will never be useful until we engage it. You will never know how to benefit of the grace. So inside that grace, listen to it again. Please listen to it. Grace is all that God has provided. Grace is all what God has provided. Say that time. Say grace is all that God has provided. Outside of grace, God has nothing else to offer. But inside grace, everything you need is inside. Do you understand what I'm to say here? So see grace like a package, like a duffel bag. Is that what they call it? That they used to travel. You know the duffel bag? Duffel bag. You carry it like this. Inside it is everything you need. Inside it is prosperity. Inside it is health. Inside it is healing. Inside it is comfort. Inside it is eternity. By the grace of God. Inside it is health. If a man wants to marry, you don't need to go and learn all the lectures. Yes, you need to know something. But when you go in with grace, don't forget, grace operates best with knowledge. But when you go by the grace of God, it becomes functional that life becomes easy through grace. Say after me, say my life gets easier from tonight by the grace of God. Say with an attitude that is right. Say my life from tonight gets way easier by the grace of God. There are two ways to succeed, by works or by grace. I invite you tonight to live a life of grace. There shall be no regrets in Jesus' name. Now, having established that, that we live a life and that the best of our lives will be optimized through grace. I want to draw your attention to something I think is important. That that grace is only utilized by faith. And in specific, we are talking about healing and health. So, the bag of redemption, which is offered to us by the grace of God, has healing and health inside. Has prosperity. The pastor is talking tonight specifically about how to assess the bag of redemption by, for healing and health. So everything in that bag can only be assessed by faith. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Why do I say so? Who can tell me why I say so? Ephesians 2, 6. By grace are we saved, what? Through faith. So we will be saved by the grace of God, but we will need faith to get it out. I, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Is it making some sense to you? So the grace that God has given to us, the Bible says in, first, in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So there's a grace that brings salvation. But that grace can only be utilized through faith. So grace can be there, and it is rotten in, simply because you do not use faith to access it. What is faith? Faith is that tool, so to speak, if you wish, that lifestyle that helps us maximize all that God wants to give to us. Faith is the hand that receives from God what grace has given to you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Faith is that tool, that hand that receives what God has given to you by grace. Now, in the package of grace, there are no exaggerations to what God has provided. God has provided power. God has provided health. God has provided redemption. But to assess any of it, you will need faith. Now, let me be clearer. You will need faith 
for that particular thing. Let me be clearer. A man can enjoy faith for his health, but might be struggling with his wealth. So, that you assess health does not mean that is all you can assess. Are you getting what I'm saying here? It is to the degree to which you assess you will experience on this earth. So you have some people being very good fathers, but being very poor bosses in the office. You have some people doing very well as businessmen, but very sickly. They know when to get sick. They, in fact, the pharmacy has their sachet of drugs prepared for them. I'm not kidding you. Some know the dates they should fall ill. And I'm not just talking about women in terms of maybe their circle or something. No. Men inclusive. You know, by this time, I used to have malaria. You see, the weather has changed. It's longer nights, shorter days. So by now, the malaria should start. And qualifying and justifying the malaria for happening. Actually, I've been exposed. You see, I came back late. I'm sure this malaria started because I came back 10 o'clock. Three times this week. You see how you are intellectualizing satanic attack. Do you understand what I'm saying here? You cannot enjoy the grace of God by disqualifying yourself through your own mistakes. The grace of God must include that it covers for your mistakes. Hey, Pastor, what did you just say? Yes. If everything must be done perfectly, then you don't need grace and mercy. If all you spend is your salary, then God is not involved. Ha, Pastor, stop shaking this table. I will scatter it. If God is not involved in your life, it's only your work you can attribute things to. Then God has not been involved in your affairs. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say here? If all you can attribute for divine health is how clean your water is, and how well you eat good meals, and how well you take your drugs, then God is not the one who is your healer. Yes. As my comes, it's because dust, dust, there has been plenty of dust. Dust has been coming from the eastern way. <laughs> Stop mesmerizing yourself. You are either in divine health or in exposed health. Tonight, I want to invite you into divine health. Is it possible? It's possible. It's a provision. Why do I say so? Not once, not twice. God kept telling us, I will make you healthy. I will make you healthy. It's to tell you that he knows that there's a side of health that is purely spiritual. And remember I told you that we are living spiritual and natural simultaneously. There's also a side of health that is 100% natural. I told you on Sunday, if you don't eat good food, you are abusing the natural principle of divine health. But divine health is spiritual, yes. But God also says that eating food. On the spiritual side, though, we have raised, you know I told you about the one, that when God, Jesus raised people from the dead, what does he tell them? Give him something to eat. Why? To be spiritual. Jesus so. Jesus raised so, not, not, not Apostle Paul. Jesus, our master, raised someone from the dead. And when the guy woke up, he said, you're awake now. Everyone wipe off. <laughs> Everyone told you. If you don't give him food to eat, he will die again. Because in this realm, it is food that will sustain this body. Another natural law, hygiene. You can't be saying, the Bible says, the Bible says, that whenever I drink any deadly poison food, you shall not have much. Go and continue. You are testing the Holy Ghost. You will be shocked that the Holy Ghost can be watching like this and you'll be dying. You are not the first two. Elisha died with an anointing. His bones raised the dead back, but he died from sickness. So you don't disobey those laws of hygiene, nutrition, am I making some sense? Exercises, rest. These are basic things. You can say, no, I'm living in divine health. It doesn't matter. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in victory. Organisuru. Please find good food. Sweet. Praise the Lord. Are you getting blessed? I told you that day I was going to the mountain top. That's that I went. And I was fasting. I was seeing double. Alpha. <laughs> I can't forget that. I was seeing double staircases. <laughs> Hunger. I was going to pray. I couldn't see again. I said, I'm not going to. <laughs> the same man of God, we can't. I said, I can't. I know. <laughs> not now. 
I was hungry. One time like that, I was, I was traveling. I was outside the country. I know when cold is dealing with you, it will clear <laughs> all the food you thought you ate. I don't know how the thing. You just notice that you are hungry. You won't feel it. Hi. I just realized that. Look, before you start to cast out the devil, check out what is dealing with you first. Have, have you eaten? Have you rested? Have you slept? Uh-huh. Have you gone to the toilet? Check those things before you start saying, Satan, I cast you out. Do you understand what I'm saying? You might be wasting your energy on what is not necessary. Do you get what I'm saying here, sir? Just like saying this technical. You know it's 100% natural, it's 100% spiritual. These technical things. 100% natural and spiritual. You can buy all the equipment, charm, and it will not work. And you can be all using old equipment and it's firing. Better than a new one. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So there's the side that is spiritual, there's the side that is what's natural. Somebody say after me, say amen. amen. Now, faith is what would help us engage it. So you can have a Christian having in his duffel bag all the goodies of redemption, but he's not able to enjoy it. Everything is inside. Why? He doesn't have faith. Nobody is telling him. Now, let's read a scripture that's very interesting. Romans 10. Are we getting blessed tonight? Please? No. Romans 10. And I want us to read from verse 11. Please, let's do a good reading. Everybody, you are going to read. Amen. We are all going to read. We are children of God, and God wants to hear us read the word of God back to him tonight. Romans 10, from verse 11. Can we do it together? In fact, I think it's more interesting. Let's start from verse 8. Can we try? We are going down to verse 17. 8 to 17. That's about 9 verses. Are we together, please? Amen. All right. Romans chapter 8. I beg your pardon. Chapter 10. Thank you. From verse 8. I was hoping that these people would give me screen. But I think they want me to release my faith for them. So from verse 8. Can we try it? Please follow the scripture. This is the scripture that introduces how faith comes to us. Very important scripture. As a Christian, you should know these things. Quickly, let's run through it. The Bible says, are you there please? If you are there, say amen. amen. If you are not there, say wait for me. Okay, well there, I hope. In verse 8, listen to what it says. But what said it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Somebody says, in my mouth and in thine heart, that it is the word of faith which we what? Preach. The word of faith is to be preached. If it's not preached, you will see the reason. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Everybody help me. Thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You believe unto the effect of what God's word has said. That's what we mean by righteousness. He says, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That scripture technically distinguishes between believing and faithing. Believing is in the heart. Faith is in your confession. When you believe in your heart, but you don't say it with your mouth, you have stopped at believing. The Bible says even the demons believe and they tremble. James chapter 2 verse 19. They believe in God and they tremble. But it says... If you are going to believe God, you must say with your mouth. Somebody say, I'm ready to say. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew in Israel and the Greek in Nigeria. Did you see that in your Bible? Is it in your Bible? Do you understand what I just read? Uh-huh. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody say after me, say, shall be saved. So he said, whosoever shall call upon the name. Somebody say, whosoever. Are you a whosoever, sir? Are you a, is there anybody a whosoever here? I'm a whosoever. Anybody that calls, it doesn't matter. Obi Kubana, Alexander, anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you get what I'm saying here? 
God doesn't look at that face. Just call on his name, he will answer you. Now look at what he says. Are we there together? Now, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? That's Isaiah. Who then faith? So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somebody say, my faith is coming. Say, my faith has come because I hear God's word. I want you to please note there that it says faith comes. If faith can come, faith can go. Did you hear what I just said? If faith can come, faith can go. 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 If, faith, if you had faith in a relationship or in a business, that same faith can work out. If you stop hearing and hearing the word, that's why I don't encourage distant relationships. Because faith reduces. You stop hearing, I love you. You start hearing, you are, there's no network, there's no, no, no. You start hearing complaints. And if faith can come, faith can go. I'm not the one that said it. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Secondly, I want you to notice that, that it says faith comes by hearing. Faith does not come by thinking. Faith does not come by wishing. Faith does not come by optim optimism. Faith does not come by mental assent. I just know, Sha. I just know. I just know that he's my husband. I just know that I will make the business. I just know. I just know. It's not just, I just know. It is faith because it came by the word of God. Anything that you feel that is positive, as positive as it is and as good as positive things are, if it is not hinged on the word of God, it has no guarantee. It is not faith. If it is faith, it is hinged on the word of God. As good as it might sound, if the word of God is not the one holding it, it's not faith. Praise the Lord. I believe I will succeed. It's not faith. I know I will succeed. It's not faith. The word of God says if they obey and serve him, they shall, you know, you have created the word of God. Job 36, 11. It must be hinged somewhere. Are, are we making some sense? That mental ascent is very good though. And like I told you on Sunday, listen, result is not what proves that there is God. You hear what I just said? That you got results does not, it's not what validates that if you don't get results, God is still God. Lord, I want this rain to stop now. It did not stop. Did God stop being God? You know what I'm saying, man? Lord, I want this rain to stop and I want it to stop now. It did not stop. God did not excuse himself from the throne. Lord, heal my mommy. He did not heal your mommy. He is still I am that I am. Do your worst. It's to let you know that result is not what validates God. God's status. You can't now be angry that God, God did not give me results. It's no longer God. Because Satan too has results. Hello? Now, I want to say this. And like I told you on Sunday, if I gain more understanding, I will confirm it to you. But what I have studied from scripture is this. That every other miracle Satan has reproduced, except these two. Healing and health and resurrection from the dead. Go and check it. Healing and health and anyone who truly comes back from the resurrection from the dead is likely. And I say this with respect. If I know more, I will share it. But I say this because I've studied it. Now, I'm not even particular about the resurrection from the dead tonight. I'm particular about the healing and health. There's no way Satan killed anybody. Is that this thing, bar? Okay, sorry. There's no way Satan healed anybody. Nowhere. Anybody you see healed is of God. Any, any, and I'm seeing, Satan can even, quote and unquote, give children. Quote and unquote. You know what I'm saying? And I can explain that some other time. But there's nowhere, nowhere, that somebody is healed. Not 
Walking therefore demonstrates the faithfulness of God and his superiority of power like healing. I'm telling you, sir. Nothing. Nothing. That's why some people say after God are doctors. I'm telling you, somebody said that thing and I agree with him. Because healing is one clear proof that there's a God. I was blind, now I see. You can't argue. You can't argue. I was blind, now I see. I don't know what you are saying. No grammar. It's your business. But whatever we make me see, I will follow him. Am I making some sense? Now, listen to me, people of God. No healing takes place without the power of God. And I'm saying to you, if you desire healing in your body, because there are a lot of people here and in life that, clo you know, clothes can be very forgiving and very concealing. We all dress well. doesn't mean that our life is well. Oh, yes. Your perfume is the sweetest. doesn't mean your life is the sweetest. Oh, yes. Clothes can be very co covering. And I'm trying to invite you tonight to admit the need to choose a healthy life. And I'm not saying by luck, I'm saying by faith. I'm not saying by luck, I'm saying by faith. Now, somebody thinks I'm just talking about the healthy life that God should just give us health. I've mentioned to you natural things and spiritual things simultaneously. But you can do those two things and if they're not activated by faith, it is still not going to work. It is faith that gives any act of the spirit meaning. It is faith. You can sing here and if you're not singing by faith, it's not going to work. Even God lives by faith. God, the Bible says God created these heavens and earth by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2. Check it out. Look at it now. It's by, the Bible says by faith the elders obtain a good report. That's verse 2. Verse 3 says, for by faith we understand that the world that we see this on this seen world were made out of the frames that we do not see. That was God that made this world by faith. God said, Let there be light. So a Christian cannot live a good life without faith, sir. It's a must. So in four places in scriptures, Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, Habakkuk 2, verse 4, and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 13. I take it again. Romans 1, 16 and 17, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. Habakkuk 2, chapter 2, verse 4, and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible tells us again and again that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. In verse 39, it says, If any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not like them that draw back unto perdition, but that believe to the salvation of the soul. Folks, your life must be by faith. And you must understand this faith comes by hearing the word of God, not listening to music. Not feeling good in your soul. It is by the word of God. As boring, quote and unquote, as it may seem, it is the word of God that brings faith. Can I hear your amen, please? Amen. Let me show you a few things that faith does for us. Number one, faith heals us. Jesus will say, by faith, you have been made whole. Faith gives us healing. In Acts 3.16, he says, this man was healed by faith. By faith in his name. Faith keeps us. First Peter chapter 1 verse 5. He said we are kept by faith. We are kept by faith. What else does faith do for us? Faith saves us through grace. We, we explore grace through faith. We explore faith through grace. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and 8. What else does faith do for us? Faith gives us victory. Praise God. 1 John 5, 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. Glory to God. Yeah. What else does faith do for us? Faith helps us to obtain promises. Faith gives us a chance to obtain promises. Obtain promises. The promises of God's word. The Bible says through faith and patience they shall inherit the promise. Am I correct there? Yes. Let me show it to you. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. 10 verse 36. It says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might inherit, you might receive the promise. Praise the Lord. So it tells us there that faith. Now, if you let me show you something else. Just one second. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So look at what it says. He was talking there in Hebrews chapter 6. 
He said in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, he says, Are you there, please? Hebrews 6, 12. Listen to what it says. That you, not, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We are justified by faith. Write that down. The Bible says now we are made justified by faith. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. We are justified by faith. We walk by faith. By what we mean, we take steps. You fix your wedding date by faith. Amen. You don't have to have everything calculated. Anytime God does not have space to function in your life, faith is not active. Faith is not available. If I have, the Bible says it's no longer faith if I have all the results. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not faith that I will get this microphone. I already have this microphone. You use faith for things that you are anticipating, not what you already have. You need money, sir. And for some people, they know better that beyond just having money, they need God for the day to stand. Your life must be by faith. The Bible says clearly, I want us to see this scripture. Everybody, if you don't mind, Romans 14, verse 23. The, how important it is to embrace the concept of faith. That a Christian, that's why the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. In other words, by every word that brings faith to your heart. Look how it says. 1423. Everybody, let's read. Everybody, 1423. Everybody, if you can, want, if you are alive and you have the breath of God in you. Everybody, want to go. Read out. Want to go. <coughs> are you saying if I eat meat, I should eat by faith? Yes. I told you the natural things you do. They are running simultaneous with spiritual. You are eating good food. You are drinking juice. It's by faith. Oh, yes. You know you can be drinking juice to greed. You know you can be drinking juice to spite someone. Make I just enjoy my life. You know, record. I just don't like many people, they stress me. I don't know. I don't know. I deceive sheep and Jews. Make black belly people, they bears. You know, that's not by faith. <laughs> you want to pepper them gang. You know what I'm saying? You want to show somebody I'm not doing badly. The Bible says, whether they eat or drink. Am I the one that said it here? No, it's not my opinion, no. Long before my mother was born, that scripture exists. It says, whatever you do. In, in, and that's why I want to invite us to the concept of living like a Christian. It requires faith. In eating and drinking, in going to work, trusting God for that promotion, there are some people you love by faith. You just trust God that you will not regret loving them. Because they will betray you, they will do all manner, they will do all manner. Even God loved you by faith. It's an investment. Can I hear your amen here? Amen. Now let me say this. On Sunday I said something, I want to close with this tonight. I'll say this and close with something. On Sunday I said something to us, that when you take a step of faith and it doesn't work well, stop regretting it. Stop cursing your faith. Stop cursing your faith. You know why I say so? Your faith does not have reverse gear. Your faith goes into your future to produce a harvest for you. Maybe you invested. Or maybe you gave some money in faith. Stop thinking you lost it. That way you have lost everything. Don't do it that way. I'm telling you how it works. Once it leaves your hand by faith, stop looking out for the harvest like God says you shall reap what you sow, not where you sowed it from. So you cast that money upon somewhere. You are saying the money must come back from here. No. If you act by faith, faith never dies. The Bible tells us that these three things abide. Hope, faith, and love. It says the greatest is love. But guess what? Faith is part of it. On this mortal realm, these three things will be re very relevant to us. Hope, faith, and it says they never die. So when you cast your seed, maybe you invested, and it looks like the investment did not come back to you. Don't use your mouth to disqualify yourself from reaping the harvest. Stay in faith. Maybe you have not done too well with your body and you feel ill. Don't say, aha, uh -huh, I know I'm sick. Stay in faith. Because you are the healed in Christ Jesus. Find the relevant scriptures to keep you there. When your bank account is going low, don't say, ah, I'm broke, I'm busted. No, don't say like that. Say, I am the rich in Christ. Say, money cometh to me now. The forces of the Gentiles locate me. Find relevant scriptures to keep yourself alive. 
In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. I'll close with this. It therefore means you need to always remember that scripture that Brother Dalton read earlier on, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 2 says that if you don't forget, if you keep in memory who I told you you are, then you will be saved. Look at this one also. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, it says, If thou put the brethren, members of virtues, in, in remembrance of these things, did you see that? If you remind virtues, Christian center members, of these things you are talking about, it says, Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Is that what it's written? Yeah. A good minister must always remind people to live by faith. Listen, prayer does not bring faith. It is the word of God that brings faith. I know you've listened to the word of God. Prayer empowers your spirit to take action on the faith. But prayer alone does not bring faith. Faith coming by hearing. How? How? Let me tell you something. Eh? Listen, you know, what I'm sharing with you now, I pray you don't need it before you go back to this message. If you receive what I'm sharing now, you just need to listen to it and leverage on it. What I'm telling you tonight is a conference. It's a conference teaching. I'm telling you. Go back and listen. You might not hear it once and understand once. Any real serious person does not listen to a message once. I know of a pastor who said he has listened to a message over 6,000 times. Oh yes. And it's true. You, you hear pastor once, you say, I've gotten it, I've gotten it. He doesn't work like that though. He doesn't work like that. Let's sit and not slap you back. You, it works by hearing. Don't be, don't be impressed. I've heard it and now I have faith. I have faith. No. When faith comes, it's a spirit. Can I hear your amen? amen? I'll close with this scripture. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. Quickly. How do we know faith has come? You cannot have faith in your heart and not speak with your mouth. See what it says. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. Did you see that? We have the what? Same spirit of faith. Faith is a spirit. Is the same spirit in America, in Nigeria, anywhere. Is the same spirit, according as it is written. So, because we know what it is written or what is written, I believed what is written, and therefore, what have I spoken? Now, what is written that I am the healed in Christ Jesus? That, but by his stripes I am healed. That's what is written. He said, the spirit of faith, because of it is written will see what is written and speak what is written. He said, because that has happened, we also believe and what? We speak. The faith I can't hear, I cannot see. If I am not, listen, and I'm telling you the truth, if you don't say it, you will never see it. No, no don't, don't tell people, don't tell people that you will do it. Okay? If you don't say it, you will never see it. Don't say, ah, don't say that the devil can, I can never be sick again. Ah, don't talk like that to pastor. Ah, you know, the devil is powerful, you know. Ah, if you don't say it, you will not see it. It is as your mouth declares. Yes, I want you to go back tonight, and in fact, starting from here, begin to declare what you desire for your health and your healing by faith. What do you desire for your health and your healing? You know, some people are not deliberate about creating the kind of health for their children. They leave it to luck. And then they have blue, 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 what's that thing called now? Eh? Blue, 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 there's the name they call it, blue, blue, bro, one thing like that, medical condition. Blue, bro, one thing, one thing, cells jamming, some, I don't know what I'm, the name is now. And you'll be wondering, you have to be deliberate. You speak life to your children long before you had the first. You speak peace to your life. Don't start to fight when there is war. Fight when there is peace, so that in time of war you can have peace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Start yes, now, start now yes, to speak. I will live till long old age. I, my bones will not be weary. My bones will be strong. Say it now that you are not under pressure. Let it be your lifestyle. Are you getting what I'm saying? Faith must work. Listen, the best of your life will only be functional to the degree of your health. If you are not healthy, you look like a joke. I pray that this message will serve for something in your life. That it will multiply your heart and produce righteousness. Amen. That the power of God will breathe upon it and produce a testimony from it. Amen. That anyone who is weak in his body from now, even emotional sicknesses or illness, I will call it, receive healing now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, the life and the fire and the power of God 
will flow through you right now bringing healing and health to your body by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that your confessions of faith will be effective. I pray that your words will carry power. I pray that your life will produce results according to the order of God's will for you. That you will find where it is written concerning your life. That he himself took your infirmities and by your, his stripes you are made healed. I therefore declare every sickness be gone in the name of Jesus. Receive the peace of God. Receive the healing of God. Receive the health of God. Tonight, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Can I hear your believing? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate God for tonight, please. I want us to rise to our feet, stretch forth our hands to these elements tonight. We're going to be taking up the communion. Very quickly, I want us to do this by faith. God honors our faith more than our actions. We need action. We have faith.